What I wish I would have known before I got pregnant is what we're going to be talking about today um, and really covering how you can have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby. I'm Bree. I'm the registered nurse and certified health coach of hippydippymom.com, the host of the Happy Healthy Mom podcast, and I'm so happy and grateful that you're here with me today. Now, if you want to take this content in in a different way it is on the happy healthy mom podcast it's on my youtube channel it is in a blog post um i guess post on peaceful living wellness so all the links to all the different types of content will be here so you can check them out in all the pregnancy information and tips that i read about and got from family and friends um, before i was pregnant and then while i was pregnant with my daughter in 2011, I feel like some very important information was missing. And today I'm going to share, like I said, what I wish I would have known before I got pregnant or even while I was pregnant. And, you know, no, it's not the best diaper bag or the best stroller out there, although that is really good information to know. And my hope with this is that this helps someone out there learn from what I consider to be some mistakes that I made. Um, I did actually start to swap out some things and, and begin to live a healthy lifestyle while I was pregnant. And I think that it's true that, you know, women, we just become more aware of our bodies while we're pregnant. Um, so that's really what happened to me. I was using some cleaning products, um, in the bathroom and I, this bathroom at the time didn't have any windows, but I would spray down the bathtub and let it sit there. Um, but I would, you know, click on the fan in the bathroom, but I walked in and it was just like this wall of chemicals hit me and I got lightheaded and dizzy. And I thought, well, you know, that can't be good for me. That can't be good for the baby I'm carrying. And so I started doing research and it was just a rabbit hole that never ended. <laughs> and I'm so grateful for that though, because we're happier and healthier now than we've ever, ever, ever been. But in that research that I did, I found a couple of studies where um, they, in these studies, they tested the cord blood from newborns. So I mean, like the second they were out, you know, and cut the cord, they grabbed some of that cord blood and they found hundreds of chemicals already in the baby's blood, which means that they were being exposed to these chemicals while they were still in the mom's body. Um, and these chemicals contribute to things like birth defects and asthma, um, and many, 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 like all the health issues really, and not even just for the babies or the young kids. I mean, years down the road, health issues could pop up as a result of these chemicals because they're, um, kind of altering what's happening in the developing body, right? Um, so the most recent studies I found on that were actually about 10 years old. So I'd honestly be willing to bet that, um, a lot of kids are being exposed to many more chemicals at this point. Cause there just keeps, you know, there's new chemicals just on the market all the time that aren't being tested or regulated in any way, shape or form. Um, I'd really be willing to bet that my daughter was also born with many of these chemicals in her system too, because I just had no idea. I had no idea the importance of priming my body before I even got pregnant. Um, you know, truly detoxing, getting rid of all these toxic chemicals that I was exposing myself to. And I had no idea that things I was doing every single day, even things that were, that we think are healthy. Um, we're actually loading my body and hers with toxins and contributing to my poor health. Um, and I've learned that in, for the first time ever in history, and this just breaks my heart, but kids now are being born with a shorter life expectancy than their parents. That's never happened before. And that's only happening because of what we're doing to our bodies. And I also... I want to say that, you know, this isn't meant to be like a guilt trip or anything like that. We're all doing the best that we can, and this is just informational. So take from it what, what you will, um, and you know, use it how you will. But if I could go back in time, I would have, I would have eaten all the organic produce and the grass fed meat and pasture red meats. 
um, I would have majorly decreased the amount of sugar that I was taking in. I had convinced myself that everything I was consuming, all the sugar I was consuming was in moderation, air quotes. Um, however, it was way out of control. Sometimes I would have upwards of like four times the amount of recommended daily added sugar. Um, and side note, I really hate the saying everything in moderation. I actually have a whole podcast episode on why I do not like that saying and why we need to stop using it. So I will link to that podcast episode. Um, I would have stopped using all the toxic chemical filled makeup and shampoo and lotion and soap and cleaning products that I was using every single day, every day. These products sometimes, I know that there's been like a, a little meme or, you know, that kind of little image going around where it says, um, on average, a woman puts on 168 chemicals every single day, but it's actually in the thousands that we put on our body. If we're using makeups and lotions and soaps and things like that, it's in the thousands. So I wish it was 168. That would actually be a good goal <laughs> to work towards because. It, it's really quite a lot more. Um, I would have worked on loving myself more and taking more time for myself. Um, you know, I feel like we're taught that it's selfish for moms to put ourselves first and to really take care of ourselves, but it's actually really, really necessary. We cannot keep giving from an empty cup. We have to refill it and recharge every day, really. Even if it's just like a five minute walk around the block, five minute like potty break where you're like, I'm going to the bathroom, everybody leave me alone. <laughs> and oops, and I hope that that works. Just knock some things over on my desk. Um, I was not a happy person and a lot of that definitely did have to do with the fact that I was not healthy. Um, I was eating a lot of sugar, a lot of processed foods. Um, I wasn't exercising. I had all the toxic products all over me. And so then my body was overloaded with toxins and that definitely affects our mood. Um, but I didn't understand how my unhappiness and moodiness was also negatively affecting my daughter while I was pregnant with her. I wish I would have worked to clear my brain fog so that when I had my daughter, I would have had a clear brain, a clear mind, and been able to enjoy all the little moments with her instead of being so foggy and tired that I was mentally checked out most of the day. There are so many little moments, you know, most days I would get into bed at night and go, oh, this happened today, but I was so cranky that, you know, I snapped back at them when this happened or I was so tired that I totally missed that moment. And then of course I would feel even guiltier. Um, and that was just all because of the brain fog. Now that it's cleared, I mean, I don't miss moments and it's so nice to be able to just grab that moment like when it's happening to be present in that moment. It's so, it's just totally different night and day. Um, I would have either never gotten breast implants or I would have gotten them removed before I got pregnant because they are so toxic. And of course I didn't know that when I got them 13 years ago, but now I know that, I mean, there's so many heavy metals in them and um, just nothing, nothing good about them at all. But I had them in while I was pregnant and breastfeeding. Um, and one goal I have for this year for 2020 is to get them suckers out <laughs> to get the, to finally have my breast implants removed. And all of this stuff still to this day leads me to feel a little bit guilty because I didn't do what was best for her from the get go. And thankfully she's super healthy. She does not have any um, health issues at all, knock on wood. Um, but I work on letting that guilt go because that's not healthy either. And something I um, you know, talk about quite a bit is our mindset and that's something that I wish that I would have started working on probably before anything else. You know, I thought I just have to eat clean and exercise and I'll be good. But a lot of it is our mindset. So there are some videos I have up about mindset and podcast episodes with experts in this area. So I can link to that as well. Um, you know, I do have to kind of give myself some grace and remember that I really had no idea 
um, you know, that what I was doing, what I was putting in and on my body was so incredibly harmful. And I tell you and my clients that there is no shame in our mom game and that as we know better, we do better. But I also tell myself that almost daily. So we're all a work in progress, right? I'm so grateful that I now know all that I know and I continue to learn so that I feel empowered and in control of my health and my family's health. And I'm not going to lie, a part of me, um, you know, a part of me feels like I have some making up to do to my daughter for, you know, not um, being happy and healthy before I was pregnant, while I was pregnant. Um, I know that that still is going to affect her in some way. So I just feel like I have a lot of making up to do. So we eat really clean most of the time, not all the time. And, um, you know, we all exercise and we all make a point to just have fun and laugh together. So, um, but that's part of it and still something, you know, I'm working on. Um, but again, I just want to set that really good example for her and, this is how we start to shift things, you know, with that next generation, even if it's something I, you know, I obviously can't go back in time and change what I did. I can change how she treats her body now when she's eight years old, all the way through, you know, till the day she dies. So that gives me some peace. So if you don't have children and you aren't pregnant yet, it is the perfect time to start eliminating toxins and healing your body so that it's the best place for you to grow a baby. But if you are pregnant or have kids, please don't think that it's too late. It is never, ever, ever too late to start making some swaps either to what you're eating or drinking or putting on your body or you know cleaning your house with. It is never, ever, ever, ever too late. Let me know if any of this resonated with you today and when you're ready to be the confident leader of your family's wellness, and just need some guidance to get from point A to point B, then please check out the Wellness CEO membership. It is my monthly membership, super low price, monthly videos, assignments, experts covering a variety of topics that, um, you know, I wanted to use this monthly membership to be able to deep dive into all these topics. So I'm here for you. Feel free to message me. Um, send me a message on Instagram at hippy dippy mom. And that is it for today. So please remember there's no shame in your mom game. And of course, as we know better, we do better. Take care.